Greetings everybody, my name is Tony Hang with PDOC Films or PDOC Podcasts. I'm excited to have you guys here today for another live podcast that's going to occur in the next couple minutes here. We have a special guest, Calvin Gall from Wisconsin. He's going to be here today presenting a little bit of history about who he is and a future that we are waiting to share with you. So please join us as we go live. Thank you. Once again, please subscribe. Subscribe to my page. Subscribe to my YouTube page and channel. Give me a like. We'll continue doing more videos for your liking. Thank you and enjoy. Hey, Calvin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Well, we're doing okay. Uh, I know that you and I, we live in very similar climates and whatnot. It's like negative 10 degrees today. Is it similar to what you got going on there? Uh, yeah, especially when you had the wind chill and it, uh, it's quite chilly here. It's, uh, it's no fun when you, uh, when you got to go out there and break some ice in, in the waters for the birds. I'm telling you, only the Midwest guys or the guys that live in the upper colder climates really understand how much put input and effort we put into these birds. It's it's insane. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I yeah, I can remember even uh, when uh, breeding time, uh, Thanksgiving was popular, and that uh, when the darkening system just started coming onto the scene, uh, you know, made up in Thanksgiving, you're having babies, and it's below zero. It was just yeah, it was it was something else. Well, Calvin, uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I'm very excited to have you here today. Um, we're yeah. going to be talking about something really crazy, something that's brand new, a new concept that uh, most we've never seen before. And uh, I'm excited to uh, get to that. But before you even go there, um, well, let's 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 talk to Calvin. Let's let's see who you are. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your history of birds, and and uh, what what you currently do with the birds right now? Sure, sure, yeah. Well, uh, I'm 34 years old, so uh, it seems like uh, what I'd call in pigeon years, I'm still a young guy. Uh, most fans years uh, tend to be a little older, it seems, so I'm of the younger generation. Uh, but I've had I've had pigeons basically since I could uh, since I could walk. Uh, essentially, uh, basically when I was uh, just a, a little kid, I followed my dad into the uh, pigeon loft and uh, never basically never left. I just followed him everywhere in there and and learn from there. So I'd say since I was about, about three or so, so I've been involved with pigeons over 30 years already. Uh, I, I'm married. Uh, my wife's name is Jamie, uh, and I got uh, three kids, uh, Jordan, Michaela, and Jeremiah, and then I've got one uh, that's uh, gone to be with the Lord already, Rebecca. Uh, she uh, We lost her in 2000, and uh, uh, July fifteenth, two thousand and sixteen. So that was always a uh, tough day for the family, but uh, that's 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 my uh, family in a in a nutshell. You always have to have that support, though, uh, when it comes to the pigeons. I think is important uh, with the family. And so, like, without my wife and that, uh, I definitely couldn't do that, do this, and enjoy the pigeons. That's for sure. Man, I'm so sorry to hear about that loss. I mean, that's. That's definitely devastating for any family. That's something you never want to do is to bury your own. I mean, that's that's tough. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough situation, uh, but the uh, so that kind of changed gears for me a little bit uh, with racing uh, the pigeons. Uh, like I said, I started out with with my dad as a kid. We flew as partners. Um, we called uh, Gall and Son. Uh, we fl- we basically were young bird specialists, like I mentioned uh, earlier about breeding and Thanksgiving. I remember doing that uh, back in the late 90s, right around 2000. People were breeding early uh, with, you know, the darkening system. I think you had to uh, breed them as soon as you could to get them through, uh, get them on a darkening, get them through the bolts so that you could pair them up and race them basically as old birds, and they're just young birds. Uh, so I did that. We did that together, I mean, all through... I was all through high school and everything. Uh, we actually moved to Georgia uh, for a year. My dad got a job as the um, as the loft manager for uh, Global Pigeon Supplies down in Savannah, Georgia. Um, and that was uh, that was an interesting time for myself, uh, but it really got me into the birds even more. I was I think 12, 13 years old, uh, new school, didn't know anybody, so the the pigeons were kind of a way out for me. And uh, I actually got to fly under my own uh, loft, own team name, get to fly against my dad. 
And uh, the first race that we flew, there was an A and B race. Uh, the first race, I took first through eighth, and then in the B race, my dad took first through fifteenth, uh, where he was racing. So it was always exciting times down there. Uh, but then, yeah, we came back and uh, we flew as partners. Um, I think uh, for me, uh, having the pigeons has always just been almost a second nature to me. Uh, we've uh, visited Gannis on a number of occasions. Uh, I think at 1996, I was about 10 years old. He came out with one of his first big breeding books that had Super Crack Olympiad in it, Blue Miracle in it. We went down to visit him and look at all these, uh, you know, famous birds. And I was able to pick out and tell him what every one of his uh, breeders were without him telling me what they were. <laughs> so, and he was uh, he was impressed by that. So uh, we went there to pick a bird, and uh, and me, uh, I guess being part stubborn, I said, no, I want a bird that I feel is special. So I went. It took me, I think, three four hours to pick one, and I picked the youngster out of the nest, brought it home uh, a couple years later. Uh, I made it up to a, a lean boar hen that I had picked out of a loft um, by myself uh, by Richard Blankenheim. He was a really good fancier in Milwaukee and put them together and the first youngster we put in a one loft race that was uh, run by Johnny Sawicki. I'm sure some of the guys in the Midwest of course know Johnny. Uh, he had the Badger State one loft race, the first one loft race we ever flew and we won it with a youngster off that pair. Oh, that's a, that's a so, great story, man. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it's always, uh, it's I don't know, it's just something uh, with pigeons. Some people just kind of have a knack for it, and it's uh, always been part of something that I've always done. Um, but yeah, like, and then as I got older, I wanted to switch into the long distance uh, game a little bit. And uh, that's not always something that's conventional here in the states, especially with a lot of young bird uh, people focusing on young birds and 300, 350 mile races. Uh, but Topeka caught my eye, and I wanted to start uh, competing there. And uh, getting and flying old birds is a lot different than flying young birds. I know uh, just from exp from experience in doing it, it's it's not quite the same. Um, but uh, I did that for for a few years, um, and then I uh, got married and moved to my current home. And uh, after we lost uh, our daughter, I decided to kind of step back from the cup. Uh, competing aspect because it takes up a lot of time and just uh, spend time with the, the family and the kids as much as I could but uh, I couldn't quite totally break free from pigeons uh, it's it wasn't uh, wasn't something that I wanted to do so I I uh, was in contact with the guy Felco Eben of Pigeon Pixels uh, he does a lot of videos over there in the Netherlands for uh, a lot of famous fanciers he does uh, videos for each national winner uh, of the ZLU long distance races and then also for the championships, the first ace pigeons of each category, so like short, middle, long distance overall. And he asked me if I'd help him with uh, translating. So I was translating the text so mm -hmm. that the captions were in English. Okay. And okay. turned it turned out that he was the photographer for Top Pigeons. And uh, Top Pigeons got a hold of me and wanted to know if I wanted to work as their agent over here in the States just to help um, obviously promote uh, their site over here and also to help coordinate with uh, getting birds sent over here, uh, help with any payment or questions people have over here about the birds that, that they have. And since they focus a lot on the long distance marathon pigeons, it was a perfect fit. So I translate their sales lists, introductions to their sales. So that's how I got started. Uh, Started with those guys and have been doing it for uh, for a few years now. So even though uh, I don't compete yet, hopefully that'll change in a few years. Um, but I have uh, I've been in touch with uh, with the pigeon game and have my uh, ear to the ground all the time. So uh, I'm definitely in tune with the way things are going. Man, that's uh, such a cool story. Everything from you, your dad's team, going down to Georgia. So I'm assuming now I'm not trying to dig into the story too long because that's this whole conversation doesn't really have to do with this, but it really caught my interest when you said global pigeon supplies. So were mm -hmm. you there? You met Bert then before he passed? Yep. Oh, yep. that's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, Bert Oslander. Yep. Yep. Nope. Oh, I uh I knew Bert and that. We uh, my dad, yeah, he was the loft manager for him. 
uh, and, and flew birds uh, from Bert's location. And then I flew birds from uh, from my house, so we were we got to kind of compete against each other and everything. And it was uh, and uh, oh, another part of that too is uh, like I said, when it comes to picking out uh, pairs and that, uh, just having a knack for pigeons. Uh, my dad, uh, just because of the timing, my dad was like, "Well, why don't you send down a few birds?" And so I could only pick a few pigeons to pair up, and so uh, I bred. I bred one, basically one pair of pigeons and sent them down there to them, and uh, it and it turned out to be the uh, the best uh, bird on my team. The first race that I flew, and she won uh, first place uh, in the club down there was uh, was a hen that I had bred, one of the only two on my team, and I ended up uh, naming her Jasmine. It was, named her after a a girl who unfortunately was uh, killed down there where I lived, so we named it uh, for her. And then uh, the next year, uh, I flew old birds. Uh, fortunately, only in one race, uh, but I flew and I flew with. I sent one pigeon. It was her, and she won that race. <laughs> so <laughs> she was a she was a special pigeon. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. I love that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, um, to let's deep dive into what we're here for today. You, we, you and I, we have had conversations a little bit about this, uh, this podcast and whatnot, and I'm very excited uh-huh. to introduce this brand new concept. Um, you have started what's called Euro USA Connection. Um, I just yep. wanted to kind of get a grasp. Can you tell us about the vision, the journey? Um, what, what's so new? What's so different about this Euro USA compared to everything out in the, that we have here currently in the USA? So I'm excited. I'm going to throw the mic to you. I, I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. Um, just explain to us what is Euro USA. All right. So Euro USA, uh, first off, it's not an auction site. I've had uh, quite a few people have already asked me. And yeah, the, the answer is it is not an auction site. So any bird that we offer is just set at a price. Um, and the birds are already here in the USA. And the price that we have listed includes everything. Uh, there's no additional quarantine or importing fees on, on the price that you see. There's no shipping mm-hmm. fees on top of the price that you see. Mm-hmm. Just whatever you, uh, the price you see that we have on our website is the price that, that you're going to pay. And uh, you're not waiting for the birds because, like I said, they're here in the U.S. Uh, they're they're hand selected by uh, my partner. So my partner is Bart Hogevin of the Netherlands. Uh, he, I got in touch with him because I was obviously, like I said before, I, I worked with Falco Eben, and uh, he does uh, pigeon. He has pigeon pixels as his business. He he does that for a living, and they photograph. A ton of pigeons all the time. I can't believe how many pigeons are photographed over there constantly. And Bart is uh, his colleague and photographs birds as well. And he's young like myself. And Felco said, "Hey, why don't you uh, talk with Bart? He's young, energetic, enthusiastic guy like yourself, and uh, see what you guys can do working together." So we uh, contacted each other and hit things off kind of right away. So. We decided to eventually come up with this concept of the Euro USA connection. So Bart, he has access to all all champion lofts over there in the Netherlands um, because he goes around, uh, photographs pigeons, he gets to handle the champions that these guys have. And so when he tells me this pigeon is a quality pigeon, I know that I can trust what he's telling me. So usually how it works is he'll. Uh, get pedigrees of pigeons. He'll send them to me, and uh, we'll discuss. Yeah, I think this is a pigeon that people can be successful with. This is the uh, type of bloodline that guys are after right now, that uh, that are doing well for other people. So yeah, I think this is a good bird to bring over. Uh, he'll photograph them over there, and uh, then they're sent over to me. So first they have to go through him uh, quality control, and then when I get them. They're funneled right through me. They're at my loft. So then when I get them, I can say, yes, this is a quality bird. This is a bird that we want to stand behind. So that's a little different than what um, some other sites are like, uh, where birds are sold on their site, uh, but they've never handled the bird. They don't know the quality of the bird. Um, 
it's basically just on a, pl a platform for somebody else to sell a pigeon. So if uh, a bird shows up that's not of the quality that the buyer thinks, they can't necessarily go to the guy running the site. But on this case, you come to me if there's a thing that maybe you don't like about the bird, which I doubt is going to be the case, but you're going to deal directly with me. Um, so in, uh, in talking about that, I think one of the biggest things that we focus on is communication with whoever the buyer is. I've had uh, some pretty poor experiences myself bringing birds in through other uh, parties, through other avenues, and communication's been horrible. It's not a fun process. Uh, it's difficult. And if you, in my opinion, if you're the person who has to initiate uh, the communication after you bought the bird and you're like, what's going on? I haven't heard anything. That's a problem to me. So my big thing is always uh, communication, customer service, uh, and being professional. I, I truly, so, I truly feel that's a, that's an experience that a lot of us feel. And you're right. I mean, uh -huh. if you're if you're having to reach out to see where your hard my money is, something's uh -huh. wrong with that concept, right? It's supposed to be the other way around, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm here whenever uh, I get a question from somebody about a bird. Uh, where a bird is, can you get this kind of bird? Uh, I get back to guys as quick as I can. Uh, I'm always checking my emails. So if I get an email from somebody, I answer them right away. If somebody sends me a message, um, it's always the quickest to get a hold of me because I can't always talk uh, on the phone, like I said, with the young family. So usually uh, talking via messenger or uh, sending me a text or an email, I'm able to answer that basically anytime. Uh, as long as I'm not sleeping, otherwise I'm always checking. So uh, I think uh, that's one thing that, that you'll find different is that you ask me a question, as soon as I see it, I'm going to answer you. I think one so one thing uh, you mentioned just a little earlier that I think I, I want the viewers to understand how big Pixel Photography, that company Pixel, this guy, he's handled national champions of all levels right this this guy has seen he has done pictures so when it comes to quality of handling um this guy knows what he's looking for and that's that's something that i want the viewers to understand that and then i believe pixel uh photography they do gps auction is that correct yep yep pigeon pixels they're they're the main photographer for uh gps auctions so they go there weekly and photograph all the bir uh, birds that are coming up for auction uh, they're also one of the main photographers for Top Pigeons that I work with, so they photograph them. Uh, they're also the official photographer for uh, Edger Camp and Son, so you know uh, when they're going there, they're handling uh, some uh, world-class pigeons. And yeah, he, I mean, he uh, he goes and he he can uh, he has access to be able to handle some of the best because uh, when you get uh, guys that privately want to have pigeons photographed, they're uh, they're photographing their best birds. That's the ones that they, they want to put on the photo. So, And uh, I think also the fact that uh, he competes himself, him and his brother, uh, as the, the Hogevin brothers, this past year in 2020, uh, they won uh, in Young Birds' first NPO, uh, Dizzy Le Gras. That was the Liberation City. And they were uh, first NPO against 14,000 pigeons. So these, these guys, this is the real deal. They, these guys just don't talk; they perform. So uh, they, they they know what they're doing, and I trust uh, I trust his expertise for sure. And I think that's a really big part of buying pigeons online is the ability for the guy that's buying the pigeons to understand what kind of quality he's going to get. You know, these pictures mm -hmm, exactly. don't 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 get me wrong. Like I I I love like the cookie cut pigeon pictures because they look so oh, great I... in a frame. Mm -hmm. But you and I know that the bird is completely different. So to have somebody double check vents, body structure, and whatnot, and then they come back to the United States, and you got to do another round of checking, and then yeah. I get the bird. That I mean, that's that sounds to me that sounds like a done deal. You know, that's a guarantee that mm -hmm. there should be no questions, like you said, unless you have a special need in a particular pigeon that most people don't look for. Most of the birds that come through both both checkpoints, when the buyer gets it, it's going to be almost, I would say, almost perfect, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's uh, it's it's quite a lot of uh, what I would call quality control uh, on our part. So yeah, we uh, we we strive for pigeons that are quality, uh, that have uh, what we think are quality genetics that's going to help 
a guy who has them uh, succeed with them, and we think that we offer them at, at what I'd say fair prices. We're definitely, uh, when you see the prices, we're not out uh, gouging people, uh, especially when you consider the cost of quarantine and everything. Uh, this isn't uh, this isn't something where it's unattainable for people. We think it's it's fair prices for uh, for what we offer, and you don't have to worry about um, you know getting there. Because I've known it's happened to me plenty of times where I've gone on an auction site about a bird that I've seen it, and I've been like, wow, I think oh, man, I really want this bird. I get there, and all of a sudden, ten minutes ago, and the the price has doubled from the last <laughs> time I saw it, and then there it is. It's uh, it's out of your reach, and uh, so you don't have to worry about bit, uh, birds getting bit up or uh, birds, you know, getting out of your out of your price range. You see the price. If you uh, want to pay it, hey, that that bird is for you. If not, maybe there'll be something else that uh, that comes up. Awesome, awesome. Let me let me kind of summarize it really quick. Um, the birds are going to be already here. They have already been through Correct. double double checkpoints, meaning that he's the guy. The guy in Europe is already inspected. You're inspecting the bird, so the bird should be physically in healthy form. And then when you get it, whatever price is listed, it's not an auction, guys. It's not an auction site. It's a preset purchase price. So you basically whatever it is that includes the whole shebang, right? I mean, there is, there, is there, Do you guys include shipping too, or is shipping another cost? Yep. Okay, shipping nope, ship, is. The shipping is in is in the price that you see on there. Look at that, guys. So no importing fee. You get an import bird pedigree, double checked, and the shipping to your house is already included. So it's an all inclusive dinner meal, man. You just buy yeah. it and you consume it. That's amazing. Okay. Now, exactly. Let's talk about a little bit. Um, I'm not going to try to take up a lot of your time, but can you tell me a little bit about your quarantine process? I know you said that you 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 get the birds, you go through them. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what you do when you get them? I mean, do you put them through a system and whatnot before you post the birds up? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So I get the birds here, and um, I make sure uh, that what first off when I when I get them out of the basket, because obviously quarantine can be rough on some pigeons. Um, if I get them out of the basket and they're a little thin, uh, they're going to be kind of quarantined on their own uh, just to see what's going on. Uh, especially young pigeons sometimes can come out, uh, you know, not perfect handling, um, super 100% pigeons because it's a stressful situation for them. Uh, so I make sure that they have uh, the best opportunity to rebound and uh, see how they're handling after a few days. Um, otherwise, the birds that, that are handling well, they... They go in their own section, but then I make sure I always, um, they always get the Ropa B products, which I think are great natural products. I don't like uh, the idea of antibiotics. They get those a lot. Um, uh, certain quarantine stations already use those uh, on birds just because they have so many different birds come from different places. So I don't like to tax their liver and uh, and everything again and kidneys uh, with uh, with more medication. If uh, if there's an issue with the bird, I take it out. I see if I can uh, treat it individually. If not, it's uh, it's taken out and and that's it. Um, and uh, they always get uh, probiotics as well. Uh, they get uh, super fantastic uh, food uh, that has a high I I use both high protein and high fat content. So basically, they got whatever they need uh, to make sure that they are in top uh, condition before. I ship them out um, to the buyers, and before uh, I even video them, because that's uh, another thing is uh, when you go to the site, um, you'll see a picture of the bird, a uh, pedigree of the bird, and then I also do a video of each bird uh, on the site. Now we don't have all of them uh, videoed because, like we mentioned earlier, it's been so cold. Uh, last time I went out there, it was maybe like two degrees, and I. Uh, I think I did videos on about six or so until I couldn't feel my fingers anymore. So I said uh, we'll have to we'll have to take this up another day. But uh, eventually, as we get warmer weather here too, uh, all birds will all have videos. So you're going to see what uh, what you can get. I describe how the bird handles, quick rundown of the genetics. Uh, so you you, uh, you don't have any surprises when you're opening the box. And I, I really like that. See, the beautiful thing about uh, getting a bird from a cold weather is it only gets better, right? I mean, you get a bird exactly. that's already acclimated in negative 30 degree weather. If you go to Florida, hey, it's just the Bahamas. You know what I'm saying? But if they go back to yeah. the Midwest, 
You know, yeah. it's it's already lived there. So the quarantine process, uh, Calvin already breaks it in for you guys. So that's that's an amazing thing. Now we yeah, hit... it's not it's not a I don't just get the bird and ship it out the next day. No, that's not the case. There you go. <laughs> now this is now we've talked a lot about your USA connection and whatnot, but how does one get a hold of you? What is your website? How do we find you? I mean, do you, do you have social media? Tell us a little bit about uh, how, how we can get a hold of you. Yep. So you can go to uh, euro-usaconnection.com. Uh, That's our website. Uh, on there, there's a, a form that you can f- fill out if you go to the contact uh, contact tab. Uh, you can fill out a form. I've had uh, plenty of people sending them to me already. Uh, there's also an email address at the bottom of the home page that you can get in contact with us. Um, so it's easy on there. Our, uh, our uh, website also has links to my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and we just started a YouTube page as well, uh, which will have videos of all the birds on there. Uh, and then uh, if you want, you can, uh, it says receive newsletter. It's basically an alert. If you put your name and address in there, anytime a new pigeon gets posted for sale, you'll get uh, an email. Uh, telling you to, uh, that there's a, a new bird up for sale uh, if you're able to and want to go check it out. So you guys can get a hold so, of him through the website, through social media, through his personal Facebook page, and you can call him or text him. So five different amazing ways. Um, the last but not least, you told me a little bit about a special, right? Can you tell me a little bit about uh, this Facebook special promotion you got going on? Now listen up, guys. This is going to sure. be a good one. Yeah, so... Uh, we are uh, raffling off a free bird, uh, and that's uh, no cost at all. You're not even paying for the shipping of this bird. Uh, I named him Lucky Harry. Uh, he, so he's of the Harry uh, lines of Jan Hoymans. Uh, his father is, uh, his name is First Harry. Uh, it's a bird owned by my partner, Bart. Uh, he's bred three first place winners. And the mother is an inbred daughter of uh, Cyrus, who was a phenomenal breeder for Falco Eben. So the bloodlines are fantastic. Um, the bird handles amazing. Uh, when I when I picked it out, I said, "Man, he picked a great one for this uh, for this raffle." So this isn't like a bird that's uh, uh, not a quality bird, and we we're like, "Well, this one's not as good as the other, so why don't we just auction the, make this one the free one?" No, this this is one of the top ones uh, that came in for sure. So uh, the ways you can enter, uh, if you go to uh, my Facebook page. Uh, the way you can find me on Facebook, it's not uh, Kelvin Gall, it's C-A, so my first two initials, and then Gall, G-A-L-L. Uh, on there, you uh, there's a, a post, uh, a video of the bird, so you're going to see the bird, of course. Um, all you have to do is uh, is share the post and like it and, uh, and get a, um, invited to our uh, new Facebook group, the Euro USA Connection Facebook group. And uh, you do those three steps, and you're entered in the drawing. Uh, another way uh, to do it is if you register for that uh, newsletter on our website, you get entered in. And then also if you tag somebody in uh, in my post and they join uh, the Euro USA Connection Facebook group, you uh, get another ticket. So you have the opportunity to get three tickets uh, in the drawing. So many, many ways, guys. And this drawing is going to happen when? Uh, February 15th, so uh, Monday. Beautiful. So just a couple more days, know. guys. A couple more days after this uh, podcast is released, which you guys are hearing now, make sure to jump on Euro USA Connections website or Facebook and get your chance, potentially three tickets, right? Three chances to win. Is that three. correct? Yep. 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 That's correct. I've had a few guys that uh, I was taking the opportunity to do that. Uh, they they got on and they joined right away. Uh, they got they signed up for the newsletter and then they uh, invited somebody who also joined, and boom, they got their three tickets. Um, and then we'll have it drawn. It's just like uh, any type of fifty fifty raffle. I have a bunch of the uh, little uh, raffle tickets, and each person, if they joined, uh, have their name on there. If they joined by email, their emails on there, and then it'll be picked uh, by my uh, daughter. She'll pick out the the lucky winner on Monday uh, evening. Do you, do you know what time uh, Monday you're going to plan to do this drawing? I'm not 100% sure yet because uh, she actually uh, has gymnastics that evening. So uh, it's either going to be after it or right before it. But I'll, I'll make sure to put that up uh, on Facebook exactly what time uh, that we plan on doing it. 
practice. So uh, we'll do it. We'll do it live, so people will be able to see. Sounds good to me, man. That's awesome. Well, uh, Calvin, is there anything else you would like to add for this conversation? A little bit uh, to summarize everything, or anything that you want to add for this uh, podcast today? Uh, yeah, I I just want everybody, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to fitness, like like I said, I don't I don't think it should be a hassle for guys. Uh, when they want to, you know, buy a pigeon and and spend their money, and you sit there and send your money over, say you buy an import, you send your money overseas, and then you don't hear from uh, whoever is bringing your bird in, you don't know where your bird is, you don't know when you're getting your bird, or you're waiting three four months to get it. Uh, this this is kind of a platform where uh, these pigeons are here in the U.S. Uh, you don't have to worry about communication. Or lack thereof, um, the the pigeons that we bring in are um, put through heavy quality control uh, when we're looking at the birds and handling the pigeons, and also the bloodlines that we bring in, uh, where we are able to pretty much get access to any birds that people want. Uh, like I said, we've we've had people request them, so if there is something you're looking for specifically, I can uh, ask my partner to find it for you and we can bring it in even that way so it's not just the birds that we offer on here uh, but if you have something in particular you want just let me know and uh, we'll uh, we'll get on the search right away for you and uh, and try and bring that uh, bring that bird into your loft and and make it successful for you so that's uh, I think that's another uh, key takeaway is something that that we can do well thank you so much Cal for being with us tonight uh, I hope uh... Uh, the listeners out there, if you guys listen, if there's any questions, make sure to f- feel free to contact Kel at any time. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, there's multiple ways you can get a hold of him and see what he can do for you. And uh, But once again, thank you so much for coming in with us today. Uh, I wish you luck on this new adventure. I'll definitely be myself checking out the website and trying to get my three tickets as well so I can be in, in this mix as well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, But uh, other than that, uh, I really appreciate everything and looking forward to talking and seeing with you again. Yes, for sure. Uh, I think that uh, we are hoping for for a big, bright future with this uh, Euro USA connection. Uh, we're talking about possibly uh, hosting uh, or being the ones to bring in the birds for the AU convention, uh, not this year, but in 2022 possibly. Uh, so it's uh, it's something that we want to keep uh, keep pushing forward and give guys access to the best that we can. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Well, take care. Thank you very much, and you take care, my friend. All right, you too, Tony. I appreciate it. You take care, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's podcast. None of this would be possible if I didn't have viewers, subscribers, and friends like yourself. My vision in the future for Pigeon Podcast is to be the news station for pigeons of the world. Now, none of this can be possible if I don't have subscribers or fans like yourself. So please, like my page, share my page and like my YouTube page. There's a lot of cool videos in there if you haven't checked it out. We're always looking for help from the public, so if you would like to donate to help our cause, to help us purchase more equipment so we can travel the world, to do what I love to do is to show the pigeon world in your view. Please subscribe and help us with PDOC Films. Thank you and have a good night.